Okay, today we are talking about replacing an electric heater on a fan coil unit, a duct heater. So if you're not familiar, here is a simplified view of what a fan coil unit is. Usually it sits up inside a drop ceiling in a commercial office building. This one you can see has a cooling coil and in red is your electric heater. However, in my case, on the unit I'm working on today, the heater is not built into the fan coil unit. It's a separate duct heater that sits just outside of the fan coil unit. And the way it works is when the blower fan is running, the blower draws in the cool air from the office space up through the returns plenum and blows that cool office air across that electric duct heater. The duct heater heats up the air and then distributes it out the supply plenum in the drop ceiling, out the supply registers. So we're working on an almost 40-year-old Schneider or General fan coil unit today. I believe they are no longer in business. I believe now they are owned by Dakin. I think they got bought out over the years, if I'm not mistaken. Someone can correct me in the comments below if I got that incorrect. So first, you want to make sure the power is off. Verify the power is off with your meter. And you may have multiple power sources coming into that fan coil unit. So always be sure the power is off before working on the fan coil unit or that electric duct heater. So with the cover off of the heater control box, you can see all the major components. Basically what I have to do is unscrew this box from the side of the metal duct and pull the entire unit out. Um, just very quickly, I'll go over some of the basic components that you see in this image. So you got 480 volts three phase coming in here. It goes to this step down transformer that steps down the 480 volts to 120 volts. You have another step down transformer up here that steps down the 120 volts to 24 volts AC. That 24 volts is then used for the control circuit. And the control circuit is what's going to tell these relay contacts to pull in to allow the 480 volts to flow to the heating elements. You can see we also have fuse blocks down here with fuses. In this case, we have general purpose uh, relays. So you got 480 volts coming into one side of each of these relays, 480 volts going out when you energize a coil with 24 volts from your control system. It's hard to see in this picture, but there's also some thermal uh, overloads or uh, thermal fuses as part of the safety circuit on this electric heater. And then also up here in this right side, you see this air pressure switch with the tube going into the duct work here. And so when the fan turns on, it closes that switch, which allows the 24 volts to flow through the system and through the, the, the safety thermal fuse. And then that allows the, the, the coil to energize the relay, pull in the contacts and send your 480 volts to your electric heating elements. There's different configurations on these electric duct heaters. Some come with multiple relays, some come with contactors, uh, some come with sequencers. Again, different makes and models might have different configurations. So I unscrewed and removed the panel. Unfortunately, the heating element stayed inside. Now I'm removing the old heating element that failed. You can see where it sat inside this duct. There's your coil right there. And it was actually screwed to this piece of angle iron inside the duct. You can see here where it's screwed on with some tech screws. And you can also see in this picture where the heating element actually got burnt out and melted. 
So this was our point of failure area right here. And this duck teeter had no identifiable markings or data sticker on it. <gasps> so I did some research and Warren Technology has stock line electric duct heaters. So basically you use this chart and you could match up the height and width and depth of the box of the electric heating elements, um, what voltage you're working with. And if you know the KW rating, that's helpful. That's necessary to know actually. Uh, you don't want a KW that's too much for the circuit um, or too little because you need a proper amount of airflow through that electric heating elements. So Keep that in mind when you're sourcing a new electric duct heater, especially like in my case where you can't find an exact replacement. But again, make sure you double check your measurements. That's crucial. And the other thing I wanted to talk about was the orientation of your electric duct heater. So the one that I bought is P1, airflow to the right, panel left. So again, make sure you have all your specs and measurements correct and make sure you have your mounting position or orientation correct when you order your new electric duct heater. I hope this information helps you. If you got any value out of this video, please consider subscribing. It helps this channel move up in the YouTube algorithm so we can help more people with their facilities maintenance and repair tasks. Please like, share, subscribe, leave me a comment, and thanks for watching.